Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. As you know, my name is Abdul Basit Muhammad, and uh, I'm originally from India, South India, Hyderabad. I'm I'm coming from a family, like my immediate family. So it's all you can say. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has blessed them with knowledge, education. Actually, my great grandfather, he used to be uh, from the <coughs> people of uh, those who worship graves. And Allah Subhanahu wa Taala uh, blessed uh, with His guidance on my grandfather. And uh, my grandfather left uh, all his uh, fortune from his father because it was based on shirk and things. And then uh, he started working as a postman. Uh, so he has very little salary, but uh, the fortune related to the grave he his father had was huge, huge, like. Uh, acres of land and they, they were very rich but uh, he said uh, everything which was built on the shirk I don't want to and then he left everything and he says Alhamdulillah in his last uh, time of his father like my great-grandfather he did tawbah and they repented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala my grandfather had very tough time because in the same time partition happened in India Pakistan and and things so he became a postman uh, and uh, that time he made a as you can say promised to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he will make his all children alim. So in those days, ulama had no value at all. So the ulama were of the poorest of any society. So the entire family was against my grandfather that, you no, know, you cannot do it because make them policeman, make them something else, but not uh, like alim because they have to beg for food. They, so th those sort of things. So, May Allah uh, have mercy on my grandfather uh, and give him highest place in Jannah. His reply was, even if my children had to sell samosas on the street after becoming alim, I'll be proud of them, that uh, they are uh, like knowledgeable people. So I'll be happy. And then Alhamdulillah, he sent all his three children to be alim to the madrasas at that time. So my first, my father, he went to very far. So it was Lakhno, uh, Nadwatul Ulama. So my dad, uh, Abdul Rahman, and Nadwi. So Nadwi is from those who graduated from uh, Lucknow. So, uh, and there are so many Nadwis are there, Sheikh Abul Hassan Nadwi. So it's called Nadwatul Ulama, that madrasa. So whoever graduated from there, he's Nadwi. It was very far. My father was very young, but Alhamdulillah, my granny and my grandfather, they, they sacrificed, they sent them. And uh, then the second one is Sheikh Abdullah uh, Madani. He's my uncle. And uh, he's president of Jamit al Hadith uh, for Tamil Nadu in, in one of the states in, in India now. And uh, the third one is uh, Sheikh Abdul Hadi Madni. He's uh, uh, like in the UK so for quite a long time. I come from that background, that, that is my family. And Allah bless my father that uh, we, we are three brothers, my older brother and my younger brother. We all are Umris. <laughs> so we graduated from a madrasa in India, uh, Jamia Darul Salam Umarabad. So my uncles, both uncles, graduated from there. Not my father. My father graduated from Nadwatul Ulama. But my both uncles graduated from Jamia Darus Salam Umarabad. So they are Umari. Uh, the university is not uh, like Madrasa. doesn't look Madrasa. It's very, very lavish place to be and spend time there. It's, it's very beautiful. And uh, regarding the Madrasa, the founder was Kaka Umar, Rahmatullahi Ali. Almost 100 years now, so I think 97, 99 years now, so almost 100 years of age. What he did, he established a village, half of the village is madrasa and another half for the public to stay. And in the other half, I think, if I remember correctly, there are six or eight streets. So half of them streets he has given to Muslims and another half he has given to non-Muslims. If, if we go a little bit uh, back to the study from my high school, <laughs> my grandfather was a very strict uh, person in terms of his studies. Uh, the reason was he, he was one of the uh, like freedom fighters for India. In the olden days, if anybody studies English, so they were being spies against the freedom of India. So scholars gave fatwa at that time that studying English is haram. So my grand grandfather was very strict on that fatwa until his death. Subhanallah, may Allah give him highest place in Jannah. So he sent us to the madrasa school, local school. Uh, it was a private school, Muhammadiyah public school. So 
It was not of very like good standard or something. But he chose that school for one reason, because they allow us not to wear the dress of the school. But in the dress it was, we have to wear a shirt and pant. So he didn't allow us, because they, in his youth, those who wear that sort of clothes, they were the spies against the Muslims. So they, he said, no, you're not allowed. So this school, they allowed us not to wear their clothes. We can say wear the traditional clothes. So we used to wear the traditional clothes and go there, subhanAllah. Uh, and everybody's in the dress and we are completely different. May Allah forgive and give highest place in Jannah to my grandfather. So they, this is my grandfather. Uh, and I went to that sort of school. And uh, because of my background and uh, like it was not very strong at that time subhanallah then in GCSE I had to go to the secondary school and the secondary school was a little bit advanced and they didn't allow me to wear my clothes and when I went there I was like feeling where I am because I was well behind in studies I did my GCSEs but uh, I didn't clear my GCSEs uh, in the first time so I had to fail the exams so even myself at that time, I believe that I won't be able to do anything in my life because of my background, my, my foundation is not strong. Uh, then, Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed me to go to Jamia Dar Salaam Umrabat. When I went to Jamia Dar Salaam Umrabat, subhanallah, uh, I completely changed. Completely changed. So, the one I was blow away a student throughout the time until GCSEs. When I went to Jamia Dar Salaam Umrabat, uh, so my teachers looked after me in so beautiful manner and they brought me from where I was. They, they, they didn't just teach the level of the school or the madrasa or the class. They took me from the foundation. They took me from the basics and they built me up. That gave me boost the confidence. So I remember when the, one of the condition of Jami Darussalam was in quarterly, there is exam, quarterly exam. So in that quarterly exam, if you take over 70%, then you are allowed to stay in the madrasa. Otherwise, you have to go back. Uh, you, you are not eligible to study. So that was a big challenge for me. But Alhamdulillah, Allah blessed me and Allah give best reward to the teachers. And some of the old students, uh, they helped me a lot. And uh, I'd like to take one of the name, um, one of my uncle, his second uncle. So he's Abdul Khaliq. He was studying there. So just... Uh, Two, two weeks before exams, he asked me, Oh, nephew, how are you doing? I said, I'm doing very well, uncle. He said, how is your studies going? I said, very good, uncle. And he said, okay, let me take your exam. He took my exam and he failed me. <laughs> he said, if you do like this, and that was eye-opener. And he, he, he said, look, you don't study like this. And he, he told me, look, you have to study properly. You, you do like this, you do that. He, then he guided me. And that two weeks, were enough for me to study and make myself and then alhamdulillah I got well over 70% uh, and then since then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opened I was uh, above average student or good student you can say Allah blessed me with that one and my journey start from there alhamdulillah so that was my studies and uh, I think it's my blood to give the speeches so from because my grandfather was his greatest speaker, my, all, my father, my uncle, my brother, my brother is very fiery speaker. So uh, this is in our blood. So I was famous for his speeches in, in Madrasa and things. So Alhamdulillah, so that was my Madrasa time. Uh, and in Madrasa, how it happens is uh, normally the, it is eight or nine years course. Uh, so it's called Dars Nizami. It's, it's long time, the traditional way of teaching. So Arabic, you go in, in the depth of the Arabic language and also usul and fiqh and hadith and tafsir, uh, usul al-tafsir, usul al-hadith, the, the language itself and the balagha and poetry and you know those sort of things, you have to study this all. So in those nine years. So this Jamia Darussalam Murabad, what they did, those students who have GCSEs, they can merge that whole into five years. There is a possibility. If you want to do in five years, you can do in five years. So I took that one, five years one. Uh, so Alhamdulillah, we were 28 students when we started and <laughs> only three of us completed, subhanAllah. The others, they have to, you know, they, they couldn't cope. Uh, but they, they, they went to the normal like nine years or eight years, subhanAllah. May Allah 
make all of them beneficial subhanallah so that was uh, umrabat and while i was in umrabat at last uh, years of umrabat i uh, started doing my bachelor's as well same time and this is one of the beauties in india that same time you can do two degrees or i think you can do here as well but i'm not sure but you can do there set two degrees three degrees so same time i started my bachelor's so by the time i completed umrabat so already two years of my bachelor's were completed alhamdulillah so alhamdulillah as soon as i came from umrabat uh, i graduated from there i started uh, giving khutbas in my grandfather's masjid for a long time and then i went to qatar so my parents were there so i used to go and come back in qatar a lot so but at that time i went for a job so i went uh, to look for a job uh, and we were looking uh, for a job those days world trade center happened so the qatar government stopped visas <laughs> so they said i have to go back to india so alhamdulillah that was a blessing so when i was going for interviews in qatar here and there i i said no i I don't need money. My parents don't need money. Alhamdulillah, they are blessed. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala have given them a lot. So what uh, I noticed that I need to study more. So I don't know. Uh, I made a mind that uh, wherever I went, uh, especially Islamic organizations in terms of their management and stuff, all like not really really good. So I wanted to do MBA. I asked somebody like I want to do something in management. So they say, oh, do MBA because that was a boom at that time. So I said, okay, I'll do MBA. And then where do you do MBA from? So I said, in those days, in newspaper, there was a big articles used to come. Learn and earn in UK. So the, the, the universities, like Northumbria universities, add with the MBA. Oh, that's good. So let's uh, try there. So I went back to India. I had to go back to India. And then I was trying to come to UK. But same time, I did my uh, preparation to get admission in India in mba so to do mba in india a huge competition you don't get the seat huge huge competition there is a exam called iset uh, like entrance exam so i think few 100000 student give that exam for around 10000 seats i also said in that one alhamdulillah on saturday i got admission in mba I paid fees. I was so happy. I bought a lot of sweets. I gave to all my uncles, aunties. I was over the moon. Wow! I got because that was a big deal for me because I came from the background of, like Islamic background. So nobody did it. So I was so happy. And then Sunday morning, I receive a, a sponsor letter from UK. <laughs> Come here. So Subhanallah. So it was a big shock. So I didn't study in India uh, MBA. I got admission. Then I have to withdraw admission and. Within a couple of weeks, uh, I was I came to UK. Alhamdulillah. So when I came UK, I did my master's MBA from Northumbria University. Same time I was Imam here. So Alhamdulillah. So after I finished my MBA, I wanted to go back. This was the whole idea I had that I'll go, I'll do MBA, and I'll go back. But uh, Alhamdulillah, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala's blessing, I stayed here and uh, between you guys. When I was in Jamia Darussalam Umrabat, as of the background of Ahl Hadith, so we want to do in Hadith. So that was my favorite, to do Hadith. As an enjoyment, like as a hobby, I used to go a lot into Nahu and Surf. Subhanallah, it's a long time, but I, I memorize all the books of, you know, uh, we used to have Anu al Hidayatun Nahu, Shuzur Zahab, I, I memorize them. Difficulties. Um, look, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي كَبَدٍ Did we have created a human being in difficulties? So, uh, all the time, uh, life is full of tests, life is full of difficulties. Uh, for example, uh, when I was in Islamic uh, school, like in Jamil al Islam Rabad, so uh, difficulty was uh, staying in the hostel, like away from the family. That was the biggest challenge. We grew up uh, uh, in in certain environment and luxuries and easiness, and then you, when you go to the hostel, 
uh, and the food of the hostel and the uh, stay of the hostel and things so that was the biggest challenge so as a joke my uh, i didn't show my uh, pictures uh, of my hostel life ever so but uh, one of my cousins sent a uh, few months back to me old pictures so my wife said oh if i have seen this one i would never marry you <laughs> so uh, yeah so that is and then when i came to uk so i learned english so learning english was another challenge for me so i was not uh, eloquent or i was not uh, able to speak uh, but when i came to uk it was biggest challenge was understanding english uh, and uh, not english but jodi uh so when i came to nika it was a big massive challenge for me to learn i found and if there is anybody uh student who is listening to this one i would urge him to look after your time so sometime we have a time to we can do something more but we don't want to do because we are doing something so we say oh we, when we do this we'll do next thing no but look after your time look after your time if you don't look after your time time will not bother about you uh, and uh Uh, one of the thing i have noticed that uh, this is the blessing of jamidar salam murabad that uh, whenever we had time we used to do something something uh, and whenever i was at home i had time i used to do something i never bother uh, if the masonry is are working at home i used to go and work with them and uh, if a carpenter is working i used to go and work with him so so the uh, electrician and i have noticed because i didn't want to waste time just sitting watching and things like this so i've noticed that helped me a lot when i came to uk so in the masjid there are so many things i just jump in and it was a how come he is doing this but that that is the spare time uh, i didn't waste it i just learn it uh, so allah blessed me in that that manner so what i would uh, urge that whatever is there if you have the time you can learn something just learn it Uh, don't say oh it's not my field it will not be- it will benefit you it will improve your whole personality inshallah as mustar so challenges are there different different challenges sometimes financial challenges but mostly as a student it is uh, uh, being focused and getting uh, like being motivated all the time that is the that is the main thing and you take all the means but remember uh, the rope of allah is really strong dua dua and dua and do good to others take their duas so that will help you a lot inshallah basically this masjid is uh, um, was the dream of our beloved haji mustafa uh, muhammad mustafa so may allah give him sihah wal afiyah he is very uh, ill these days uh, and may allah make this sadqa jariya for him that was his dream so people don't even know that was his dream to have a masjid here and he was friend of my uncle uh, who was uh, the amir of jamiat al hadith at that time uh, and uh, they wanted to have the masjid here so they uh, had communication between them okay so they were looking for the places here in newcastle for uh, to establish the masjid so uh, uncle mustafa said look we need a imam uh, for uh, our masjid uh so my uncle said look my nephew is coming for his studies so he can come he can do studies and same time he can be imam so un- uncle mustafa said okay that's fine so i end up in newcastle like that and uh, so i studied and after the studies my idea was to go back uh, but uh, alhamdulillah allah blessed me to stay here uh, when i came to uk wh- it was in december and it was so cold i can't believe it it was first time in my life everywhere is snow it's not like t- today so uh, that time there was a huge snow so i have seen like 2 feet of snow as well like so haji mustafa used to say uh, we have seen 6 feet of snow i said 6 feet like 2 feet was too much sir. so i i used to stay at home of sheikh abdul had inside like you know uh, in in the room never come out because it's so cold Uh, so the first night <laughs> this is as a joke subhana the first night i came it was so cold and, uh, and they said okay this is your room you are taking rest and all of them went to sleep and the heating was uh, on and uh, okay i was okay and then heating went off and i started feeling cold subhana so i have to open my bag and wore all my clothes all of them and there were two 
blankets. I just wrapped myself in the blanket and became like a bear, you know, teddy bear. And then I was lying. And then for Salat al-Fajr, Sheikh Abdul Hadi came to me. And said, hey, get up. And he came and he started laughing. And he said, what happened? I said, oh my God, so cool. He said, subhanAllah, there is a heater, man. There is a heater. You, you could use that heater, you know. I started laughing because I didn't know that. So this is the cultural shock, subhanAllah. So I was in his house for a month before I come to Newcastle. But same time, in Bradford, they needed the Imam. So the Newcastle Masjid was getting like, uh, you know, purchased at that time. The process was going on. So still some time was there. So I, so the, those people contacted my uncle and my uncle said, okay, take him, he's free. So I was there. I just went until the new Imam comes there. But they, they loved me, so they kept me for six months. And then Haji Mustafa said, no, 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 he's our Imam, we need him here. So Alhamdulillah. So like this, so I spent, it was very good memories in Masjid al-Huda in, uh, in Bradford, mashallah. This is really, really important. Uh, uh, important to know the history of the new mosque project, subhanAllah. Uh, if, if we know the history, then that will make much easy to understand where we are and why we are, so inshallah. So what happened when we bought this masjid? Um, Sheikh Sudayyis visited, I think it was 2003 or 4, maybe late 2003 or 4, something like this. So he visited, uh, so in the same masjid where we are sitting, so he was sitting and then uh, he, he, he looked at the whole building uh, and uh, we had a very good time because he was here for 2-3 days with us. Uh, and uh, for a week he was uh, going around, uh, you know, he was on holiday. So he made announcement. He said, okay, we will make in Northeast the biggest masjid. And he instructed to to take the idea from Adam Ramas Masjid, Adam Ramas Central Mosque. So we said, all right, okay, inshallah. We took the idea and he made announcement that this masjid will be built on the name of so and so that person will sponsor this masjid. All the things were done nicely. Okay, alhamdulillah. Promise was made. And then we started working with the architects. So there were and two, three, three, four different plans were made. The first plan was to make a separate masjid on the side of the existing building. At that time, the building, it was there. So that, that was the first. But uh, when they made it, uh, and then we had con with council uh, like meeting, they rejected. They said no, because this is Victorian building. You cannot have on the next street a big building. So it ha the whole surrounding has to be empty. So that was rejected. Then we thought we'll make the, some alteration to the building, but the, it was not possible because the uh, council had no issues, but it was not fitting for the purpose. So then. Then there was a third attempt to make extension to the building. So when we were trying to make the extension again, uh, the amount of extension they were allowing us, it was not suitable for the purpose. And then the fourth one, the one which we have now. And before this came into existence, the plan, uh, may Allah give best reward to Brother Maja, uh, Brother Zubair, and uh, Haji Mustafa, uh, Jamal, brother Abdul Latif from Libya. Uh, most of us went to many masajid around UK. We went to Edinburgh Masjid. We went to uh, Whitechapel Mosque in uh, London. We went to Bolton Central Mosque uh, and, and many different, different masks, just to collect the ideas, how they are doing, what they are doing. So we, we went there so uh, to collect the ideas and then we collected we started working on it and one of the big problem came Hadrian wall is passing by from somewhere here so that created a lot of issues so we had to do around 15 16 something uh, surveys uh, different different surveys and things so alhamdulillah but by the time we got the planning permission the promise was no longer available there because the person who promised Sheikh Sudha is that person got in trouble and then he cannot fulfill the promise. 
So now that time the decision was either go back and change everything and make a simple box type mosque or keep it the same. So some of the Arab brothers, they gave a lot of hope. They said, look, still we can go and we will work and we'll get somebody who can build the masjid and things. So, okay, so we started going to Saudi Arabia, but uh, no success. Many people were there happy to build the masjid, but uh, uh, in, because it was international project for them, so they, the law was not allowing them to do it. And then we went to Qatar. Uh, they had some bad experience in Canada, so they, they were not happy to do here. Uh, so so we did our best and then we said okay let's carry on with our own efforts so they, therefore the masjid without compromising in anything so we alhamdulillah carry on and the, now the masjid is uh, you can say over 50 percent is done now so the whole brickwork will be finished in two months time inshallah you just work you just work. keep your goal and you just work for it and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make things possible and things look impossible in the beginning and always you will have people who will be pulling you down uh, let them do their job so you be like a uh, like a rubber band you know stretch it I have a rubber band here you know stretch it if anybody is pulling you down when he'll leave you you'll go higher so make you yourself able that when you go higher you stick there and then let somebody else pull back or otherwise carry on your journey so never never yes when people speak negative about you or they point a finger for no reason Anbiya alayhi salatu wasalam they got accused they got uh, troubled and what about people like you and me so my advice is whatever you are doing in your life Set a goal, make sure you don't harm anybody, don't have ill feelings about it, keep yourself connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without harming anyone, just move forward. Mm. <laughs> Most important lesson in my life, subhanallah. Uh, there are many ways to look into it, but one thing. Uh, I would say is look after your parents what happens uh, sometime they sacrifice so much for us and uh, when they are in need we won't be able to uh, like physically present there but this is all Qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when you have time with you in your hand, look after that one. They are the doors to Jannah. So, subhanAllah, uh, there were time in my life uh, when, uh, because I'm away from my family, and, and this can relate to many people as well. So when you feel uh, a kind of uh, useless, <laughs> Uh, that you are away from your family and you won't be able to like physically be with them so if you have the chance to so look after it look after it subhanallah and if you are away keep connected with them and make lots of dua for them and uh, yeah uh, we all should strive and struggle and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will guide and give us tawfiq